How are we doing today, my cryptids and creatures? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing another time-lapse video, but this time with some commentary, because I think it'd be really cool for me to talk about my process now that I'm uploading some more recent work. You'll have to forgive my voiceover quality in this video since I'm recording the audio away from home and away from my much nicer microphone, but I hope you enjoy my rambling and watching my painting process. This piece was from March of this year, and I actually made it as my very first piece for Ross Draws Digital Art Bootcamp. Our first assignment was just to make something, anything to act as a baseline for where our skills are at the beginning of bootcamp. We'll be redrawing our first assignments at the very end of bootcamp, so that's something to look forward to. I started off this piece with a bunch of different references for the pose and lighting, and I was shooting to capture the brawler side of Arabella, my LARP character, who is big on unarmed combat and pyrotechnics, which you'll see me add later in the video. Getting started on coloring and shading is usually where any illustration I make of Arabella starts to look absolutely horrifying, and that's where I'm glad she's from a horror LARP. I think something about blacked out eye sockets make me forget how to draw facial anatomy in a way that looks nice, but I'm sure that's something I can figure out someday. You know what, if you're an artist watching this, Tell me in the comments, please, if you also have stages during your art where you look at your current progress and just go, oh my god, what curse monstrosity have I made? And like, not in a good way, you know what I mean? I cannot be the only one. Obviously that stage like passes as you work through the art some more, but it always seems to linger in the back of your mind like, oh wow, that was really bad. I do spend a while trying to figure out the details on the face, setting up some of the finer shading as I go, touching a bit on the hair as well, all before diving into the rest of the body. Slowly but surely we move out of that horrifying initial face shading, and she starts to look more like an actual real person, and I'm always really happy to see that since, you know, that is technically my own face I'm drawing. We do move away from the face to define the hand a bit better, sort of in a very loose, almost fist but not quite position and I start thinking about how I want to go about darkening her hands before settling on doing some shading in their current color before taking them dark. Because she's a user of pyrokinetics, her hands are pretty crispy. Her hands in particular are extra crispy because they're a part of her ascension, which is a form of faith-based mutation that those of her strain achieve as they see more play in game. I make some general adjustments to the entire piece's color balance just to make things a bit more cohesive before I jump into some extra detailing, and we finally get down to getting those hands darker. As I work on the hands, I work on touching up the arms, the body, and defining her shoulder a bit. In doing that, I cut through a lot of that messy sketched hair, making room for more painterly strokes later on. After making a few more adjustments to the painting layer, and yes, it is mostly done on one layer, I actually completely removed that bit of gold from her forearm. When I first sketched out the piece, I thought it might be a nice addition to have her gripping this gold ribbon that would flutter as she threw her punches, but I ended up deciding I wasn't going to keep that in the piece. It's something I might revisit when I come back to redraw this piece at the end of boot camp, but for the time being I felt like I wasn't quite getting what I wanted out of it and it didn't really fit the vision of what I wanted for this piece. And it's during this piece where I actually discovered the mixer brush tool, and I found it so fun to work with, actually. I don't think I used it to its full potential in this piece in particular, but it added some very lovely painterly qualities to some of the strokes I made, especially later in the piece when I worked on the hair some more. And despite all of my reference material, you do get to watch me flounder around with the shading on this arm for a while. Foreshortening is always a struggle, and I absolutely knew it would be going into this piece. But hey, if you don't do the things that are hard, you never really learn how to get past them, right? So right about here, we can touch back on the fact that I was doing all of this on one layer, and unfortunately, that also included the background. So you can see me very quickly remove the dark background from the layer and start cleaning up around the edges of the character. And I do add the dark color back into the piece, but on a different layer this time. I don't mind keeping my art on one layer, especially lately, but for simple portraits like this where I tend to tweak stuff behind the character, I like to keep things easy to change. It also lets me edit around the character by using the eraser tool to define the forms without having to worry about messing up the background behind them. I do get the hair looking nicer, its shape's better defined, and added some movement to it, and around this stage is where I really started enjoying what I was looking at. 
mostly little tweaks here and there and more shading during this process, bringing in a lot more of those dark values. And then came the fun part, fire. Oh boy, lots of fire. So I mostly used the lasso tool to create some sharp shapes and filled those in with some fiery colors. I wanted her to be throwing this fiery punch, which is a really fun way I imagine her fighting in game, combining bone breaking punches and searing flames for this flashy effect. A lot of her backstory through the years has painted her as a sort of phoenix, which further pushes that fire theme. While working on this fire effect, we also touch back on where I mentioned her hands being part of her ascension. She has this permanent visual effect on her hands and forearms, which look like tiny flames dancing on her skin. They leave her with this tingling sensation that never quite goes away, but it's something she's slowly growing used to. This concept originated during an online event where she was afflicted by a more severe version of this effect after a bold use of psionics. It was something of a bad side effect caused by the region she was in. I like to think that having it come back as an ascension acts as a reminder that hard decisions can have consequences no matter how necessary they are. Well, whoopsie, that got deep, but I mean, that kind of storytelling is a really fun part of making and developing LARP characters. So we do eventually settle on a way to draw her curled hand and all of its lovely little flames, and we get back up to her face, where I add in her actual first ascension, where her burned out eyes slowly leak these golden tears. You can see that on her in the first proper art I made of her post ascension, being my judgment tarot card I made for the character a long while back now, actually. That was before she had her fiery hands. They were still crispy, just not quite on fire yet. At this point, the meat of the piece is just about done, and this is where I start jumping around the piece and adding in little details and flares to round it all together. I use the mixer brush to paint in and move around strands of hair flying around, adding more shading to different parts of the character, and all around working to make things look prettier and more cohesive. While playing with the mixer brush tool, I found out that it could do some interesting things on the transparent parts of layers, and you see that in the little swoosh of yellow I added in the background. It was sort of added on a whim, but I felt like it added this really fun bit of movement, and it was also reminiscent of the gold ribbon I had cut out from the initial sketch, so I kept it there for the finished piece. In total, this piece took me a little under six hours to make, maybe something closer to five. And I do think I could have spent a little more time cleaning up some of the details and doing some more rendering, but I'm overall very happy with how it came out. I tried not to spend too much time on this because I wanted it to just be a quick little assignment, just my little boot camp baseline, and we can just get the ball rolling from there. I do tend to get really in my head about how long it takes for me to finish work, but I realize that feeling tends to hit me the most when I'm only really an hour or two into a piece. Whereas most artists I see posting their work spend hours in the double digits to make their illustrations. I imagine that's something that can only be worked through just by making more work and getting my workflow to be a little more efficient. Overall, I'm just glad to have more art for my character as I'm notorious for spending most of my creative time drawing things for other people and not so much for myself. I'm hoping bootcamp gives me more opportunities to create more personal work and so far it has. I'm really excited to see where it takes me over the course of the year. As the time lapse draws to an end, you can see me put in final touches on things like the face and ears as well as the hair, and the whole time I'm just zooming in and out so I can keep track of how my changes affect the bigger picture. And of course, since this is a Rostraws bootcamp, it just can't quite be a Rostraws assignment without playing with Color Dodge. Unfortunately, I can never quite seem to find success in using it quite as liberally as he does, so I more or less keep my usage of it pretty mild just to get some of my highlights and colors to really pop. I checked the final piece in grayscale just to see my values, and after that, voila, we're finished. And that wraps up the video, so thank you for watching. Huge shout out to my patrons over on Patreon who voted on what video I'd be uploading today, and thanks to them in general for supporting my work. Subscribe to the channel for more art videos, and follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more art and updates. Links are all below. To all my cryptids and creatures out there, have a good one, drink some water, and I'll see you in the next video.